I'm Maya. And I am Abby. And we're here to talk a little bit about AC's journey with inclusion. Today, we have ver two very special guests returning to AC to share their vision of what it means to be an inclusive school. The pioneers themselves, Ms. Madeline Heidi and Ms. Paula Torres de Pereira. Hi, uh, I'm Madeline, and I, at the time, um, I was the director of Academic Cotopaxi from two, 2013 to 2019. And I'm Paola, and I started working at Cotopaxi in 1987 and left and came back and, um, and then worked there through 2020. And I'm very excited. I left when I was the elementary principal. Thank you so much for being here today. Now, let's get started with some questions. First, we'd like to ask how it all started. What was the motivation for implementing inclusion at AC? So I, I when I saw that question of how it started, I went back to 1987 um, when I was the school receptionist and I would have the privilege of um, seeing children and adolescents with um, a diverse uh, diversity in their needs. Uh, there were children actually that I also had diversity in their mobility, like on wheelchairs. And um, since the 80s, Cotopaxi um, was in Quito and actually in Ecuador and the region, a, uh, a school that fostered uh, inclusion and that wanted to welcome um, children with a variety of needs and students. And so it started there for me. And, um, and then I'm going to pass it on to Madeline because... Hmm. It uh, the school went through years of um, perhaps different admissions criteria and possibilities and what we could do, um, and then came um, a really important opportunity. Well, and when I came in 2013, I was already very impressed with what the school was doing in terms of supporting students with all kinds of needs. Um, but then in 2013, the board really began a review of our mission and our strategic plan. And the community expressed a, a very um, strong desire to be more inclusive and to value diversity. And so those were statements that were written into the mission statement and the strategic plan. And so we had those words in our, in our mission and in our plan, and we really wanted to hold ourselves accountable to making those dreams come true. So one of our strategic end results was actually to have a long-term commitment to becoming an inclusive school and serving a managed number of students representing the full range of learning differences and language diversity. And we really believed that we had a moral imperative to be a school that supported all students and not just the students with the top scores. Um, because many schools use the lens of, of saying whether a student fits into their school or not, but at AC, we really believed that it was the role of the school to find ways, effective ways, to meet the students' needs, of course, using our expertise and the limited resources that we had. Um, and so that's really how it began. There was a desire in the community to see this through and to make this happen. Madeline, I think that something, too, in that beginning journey, you, you mentioned a little, uh, thing, a little about it, about the expertise was there. So we were yes. very fortunate that we had a group of people who had had very positive experiences with systems in other schools or in you know their lives of um, of inclusion, and um, we were able to harness that and and bring excitement to to others, and um, and then we had someone knock on our door, you know the strategic plan was there. We had the long-term commitment. We were super excited because the board said yes to that long-term commitment. It was now on our mission statement. And we were going to get ready to decide, okay, now how are we going to do this, which is the next part. But then someone the knocked on our door. I heard, I heard <laughs> that you guys can serve the needs of my child. And then, Madeline, why don't you take it from here? <laughs> well, and then, and we were um, really not re not yet ready to take that step. I mean, from all points of view, we felt like we were, our idea was that we were going to take this slow and we were going to be more prepared and more, you know, with all the staffing and all of the resources that we needed. But then we were presented with this student who wanted to come to our school. The family was wonderful and was ready to partner with us. And so we just felt like here we are facing exactly what we talked about. How can we say no to the student simply because 
we're not ready as a school. And so we really took that leap of faith to say, we have to do this and we have to do it now, even if we're not fully ready with everything that we think we want to have. Um, and I think there was a little bit of, um, it really was a leap of faith saying, we are committed to doing this. We have the expertise in-house to make this happen. Of course, we need to make some tough decisions about what we can and can't do, but we are in partnership with the family and we know that we can go, we can do more when we work together with families. We also had the support um, from our faculty and staff. And in fact, there's a significant story here that I think we want to tell when one of our staff members really said to us during one of our strategic planning sessions, really said, hey, if we truly value diversity, then why don't we have more students with more extensive learning needs? And this really jolted all of us into saying, we have to do this. We can't say no. We said we were gonna do it. And now here we are faced with this situation. We can't say no. So we were kind of like held accountable to our dream that we already said we wanted to do. Um, and sometimes it happens in schools where the timing isn't exactly perfect. And yet you have to take that leap of faith and you have to say, come on guys, let's go, let's make this happen. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. I think that there was um, that um, first knock on the door resulted in like literally the next day, another knock on the door and the next day, another knock on the door. And in that first year where we did welcome students with um, higher level of needs than we had in the past, um, there were students in elementary, student in middle school, and then three students in high school that rocked the boat. They yes. really rocked the house, <laughs> right? They put us on higher. And it was, it was just fantastic. And we're so grateful for the families that uh, supported and the teachers of those first years that and the staff and from guards to administration, everyone who um, who who really said, OK, I want to be part of this. I want to welcome students instead of waiting for them to be able to reach a place. Um, and it was fantastic. Yes. <laughs> nice. What a great story. Thank you for sharing. Um, <laughs> In inclusion has brought the community together. Um, so yes, I, I really love that question because I think it's true that it inclusion really did bring our community together. And I would say that there were many um, intentionally designed opportunities to build awareness and to also create this sense of urgency that you know we have to act, we have to take action. And also the motivation and the will to to follow through as a school. And we were there were many. Paula can can give many examples because she was a principal at the time. But I I would say that the opportunities that we planned were across the whole school. So it wasn't just like one division of the school or coming from one particular department. It was really things that we felt we're going to be effective across the whole school because we believe that this um, strategic direction we were moving to was for the whole school. It wasn't only, for example, just the elementary school, or it wasn't only for a particular department. It was really designed for the whole school. So the, our, for example, I'll give an example and Paula can give a few more. Our counselors ran um, intentional sort of like learning sessions with our students in each of the divisions. So they ran several. Um, I went to all of them. And really the idea was to engage our students in talking about how might we uh, have students with a more extensive set of learning needs at our school? What would that look like? And what is our experience with that? How might we welcome them? What are some ways that we can do that? And I think from the very beginning, students were involved and engaged and aware that this was important. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give an example of that, Madeline, that you, you made me think about. Um, that is one that is really, really, truly amazing. And it is about students and students who now not only understood, but really wanted to assure that that long-term commitment was true. Students probably mm. didn't know that, that was in our strategic plan but they wanted to make sure it was true. So we had a student in elementary who, um, who could not independently go up and down stairs. And so 
while they were in first grade and then in second grade, it was all good because it was all on the first floor. But when mm -hmm. the child re reached third grade, like what were we going to do? And the students, first those students had created alternative possibilities for the playground. And then they also said, you know what? Let's move third grade to the first floor <laughs> because we didn't have an elevator, right? And so on like the last days of school, uh, like 70 students helped to move everything from third grade to second grade and then second grade moved to the third floor and everybody was moving and it was the whole community like harnessing together and just like all that energy <laughs> to assure that everyone belonged, including someone who perhaps, you know, had those uh, difficulties with mobility. I and think what's so, yeah. Sorry, so, go ahead. <laughs> no, those are the stories, right? So those are the stories that talk about. Um, so there, we, there, there are the intentional about understanding. And then there are um, those stories that come about because the community is, is willing to engage and actually has that desire and that motivation to, um, to be a, a place for all and give everyone a sense of belonging. And I, and I think what was so wonderful and powerful about that is that students saw the impact of their actions and their mm -hmm. voice. So they felt like they were a part of it, that they were making something good happen. And, and I think what was really remarkable was that this was, we were talking about one student in the particular story, Paula said, this is about one student. And what we were saying as a community was one student matters. So the world of that one student, even if it's only one student, we want to make that world better. And how can we do that as a community? And that was very, very powerful for all of us. Um, I think too, there were there were many you know, actions that were taken, big ones, little ones, that really brought the community together. Probably one of the most visible <laughs> ones and the ones that everybody who was a member of the, the school at the time loved was our Friday cafe. So we had uh, so we had a group of students with really a wide variety of learning needs and they really planned to host a learning uh, a, a Friday sweet morning coffee. Oh yes, well, it was called Sweet Morning Charities and it was still a coffee it? shop. Pardon? You uh -oh. still have it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was powerful for everybody because it was led by students who were within this range of, of all kinds of learning needs. And we saw what is what is possible when students are taking the lead. Of course, they had a lot of support, but it was really everybody in the community benefited from that. And it was a powerful way to bring people together um, who were building their own awareness, their own understanding and also a little bit of empathy towards this is the way the world should be the world should be much more inclusive lastly what message would you like to leave the ac community with today <laughs> so many <laughs> paula go ahead <laughs> well, well first that i could not be more honored to have been a part of that story and to see that story continue Mm. and continue through um, the actions of uh, students, of families, of teachers, of board members and support staff and everyone who makes um, the, that, that possible and who contributes to the Cotopaxi family. Um, so that, that, that sense of togetherness mm. uh, somehow is the message of be proud of it and continue feeding into that sense of togetherness of belonging um a belonging for all it's uh yes continue with like the technical part of getting to be really strong experts but also continue with the heart in the right place and mm -hmm. and continuing to be a place where um everybody knows your name <laughs> i think that ac has an incredible platform to continue and it's important that this platform really is visible to not only to the the parents in the community the the members of the community today but there's also a, a real vision towards projecting that out into the rest of ecuador the rest of south america the rest of the whole world to learn from the experiences that are so so precious and so valuable and very 
not very um, common in other schools. There are so many schools around the world who uh, will not take students unless, you know, unless they're a certain category and will say no to serving students like this. So I, I really feel like AC has a wonderful opportunity and students have a wonderful opportunity like this to really show how it can be done when there's a will and there's the motivation, there's the support and there's the expertise um, all wrapped together in that sense of belonging that Paula so powerfully talked about. So we want AC to be continue to be a beacon of success in this area and to shine as brightly as you have shown in the past and maybe even brighter going forward into the future. Well, thank you both for taking the time to talk with us today and allowing our AC community to reflect on the reasons we're an inclusive school, why we do Inclusion Week, and the positive impact that it has on our community. Okay, everyone. Go thank Cougars! <laughs> Yay! Thank you for joining Maya and I for AZ News, and we hope to see you again. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you Happy for asking. Bye, Maya. <laughs>